Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for having me here. Um, I know this is the last session and there's a quick wrap up. So I am officially between you guys and a beer on the rooftop. So it's scheduled for 30 minutes, but if you bear with me, I think I can do it in 20 um, and leave some time for questions at the end. Um, so just before I start, big thanks to the Optimove team. I actually joined Group Dynamite uh, June 17th, and I think we signed the contract by the end of August, right? Pretty close. So we haven't even gone live yet. We start the implementation in December, but hopefully by the end of my presentation, you will understand why we acted so quickly and we signed up with Optimove. Uh, after being here, super optimistic, we made an amazing decision and looking forward to work with the team and, 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 and learn from them. Um, so without further ado, I want to ask a quick question, and I'm assuming not many of you will put your hand up, so you will not offend me. Who here has heard of Group Dynamite? A couple Optimove people. If you were in Canada, at least 90%, if not 100% of you would have put your hands up. Uh, so we're a pretty big retailer in Canada. We have, we've been in business for over 40 years. Uh, we have over 400 stores, 200 of which are in the US. Um, and we have over 5,000 employees. So we're a pretty big retailer. Our target customer, we have two brands. One is Garage. Uh, we, she targets 15 to sort of 22 year old fast fashion. Think, you know, H&M, Zara, that kind of stuff. And then we have Dynamite brand, which is when we convert her when she gets a bit older, she starts to work. Dynamite targets the girl more 22 to sort of 35 with a bit more focus on uh, workwear. But this video should sum up one of our brands pretty well. It's great just being yourself. Own it. I am worthy. And I'm comfortable in my own skin. I'm just going to be treated. I am comfortable in my own skin. You should be treated. You should be treated. You should be treated. You should be treated. I am who I am and I own it. That's Garage. Um, yeah, pretty cool brand. So why was I asked to come speak here if we haven't signed up with Optimove? Um, Dynamite is currently going through a very large digital transformation. I personally haven't seen anything like it. I think I've worked for some pretty large retail companies. My background's in telecommunications. Um, we called the transformation North Star. Uh, basically what happened about a year ago, kind of a marketer's dream, the CEO went out to every single person in the organization and said, guys, give me a list of everything you wish you could have done, but you don't have the budget or resources to do it. We got a list of hundreds of initiatives. Everyone wrote business cases and presented their business cases to the CEO. And from there, we prioritized and we created our work stream called the North Star. There are nine individual work streams ranging from pricing strategy, employee satisfaction, product, marketing, and the one I'm gonna focus on today is the digital work stream, which is actually part of the digital transformation. And it's funny what Boris was talking about being best friends with your CTIO. Well, my CTIO is actually my boss. Um, so we worked together at a, a prior retailer. He, he joined Dynamite about a year ago, and he, uh, he brought me in. And the reason he put me under himself is exactly what Boris was. We have such high velocity of programs that they wanted the marketing team under the technology team, under IT, so we can move faster, be 100% collaborative, and break down these barriers that Boris was talking about between marketing and IT. And I can, I can assure you it's working really well. So there was three main goals of the digital transformation. One is to take that brand that you saw and, and take it to the next level. We wanna be the coolest, most relevant fashion brand in North America. We do not use the word retail. We, we completely dislike the word retail. We wanna be a brand. Retail has lots of negative connotations. People tend to focus on stores, things like that. So we wanna be fashion brands. We need to empower our employees because without your employees, you're not gonna deliver your results. And lastly, of course, you know, financially, 
We want 50% of all of our revenue coming through digital channels, which is a massive, there's not many uh, fashion retailers who are anywhere near 50%. Most retailers probably 10, 15, maybe 20% max of their revenues coming through digital. We want to be at 50% within the next three years. So my work stream, as I said, there's nine work streams. Each work stream has a sponsor who then rolls up to an executive committee who effectively manage this uh, transformation. So I head up digital. Under digital, I have four work streams, which I'll talk you through in a minute. I have over 38 separate initiatives. Just to give you an idea, Optimove, rolling out Optimove is one initiative. Rolling out our new website, Salesforce Commerce Cloud, is another initiative. So these aren't small initiatives. They are big, meaningful initiatives. Um, and, and as a result, I have about 20 people under my team who each own uh, these initiatives. And I'm going to get into it in a bit more detail about the process and how these teams work because they still have to do their day jobs, yet they're also being asked to deliver these, these huge uh, strategic initiatives. Um, so just quickly to talk through the, the four key pillars, we have a work stream on customer acquisition. Great, paid media, you know, Google, all the usual channels. But again, we're bringing a data-driven approach to everything we're doing. So as an example right now, paid media is always a hard one because you, know, you want more money, but then you get challenged, well, is it really incremental? So the way we went about proving this was we took Canada and the USA and we split them into three zones. Each of the stores and cities were mapped against these three zones. One zone we called the blackout zone and we turned off all of our paid media in one of those, in, in that zone. Risky, right? But if people don't believe in paid media, what's the best way to prove the value than shutting everything off? And then your store starts screaming for it. You kind of prove it, you prove the value before you get too far. The second stream was like business as usual. And then the third stream, that's where we started laying around additional budget and money to prove the incremental ROI. So again, everything we do, we take a data-driven approach. We don't just loosely go and spend more of the money. Conversion was mostly around online optimization. We use a tool called Dynamic Yield, which I'm sure some of you have heard of. There's another tool called Optimizely, and it's pretty straightforward. When people hit the website, it funnels half onto like one view and the other half see something else. And through aggressive testing, you can quickly work out, you know, showing, you know, one group of customers this versus that makes more sense. You test it for seven days to 10 days, prove it's statistically significant, and then you roll it out. Loyalty, CRM, this is really what Optimove is here to help us with. So I'll talk about that in a minute. And then the foundation piece, all this technology and all the fun marketing stuff on top only works if you have a core foundation. So as I said, as well as all the new marketing tools and technology, we are rebuilding our core platform. So CRM databases, Commerce Cloud with Salesforce, Service Cloud with Salesforce, um, rebuilding our mobile application. So there's a huge program of work and the breadth of this program is pretty significant. So how does this all work? So as I mentioned, we have uh, Workstream leads, and then what each Workstream lead has what we call a pizza team. Enough room, people to sit in a room and have pizza over lunch. So we wanna make sure everything's collaborative and cross-functional, so under the CRM pod, so someone on my team would probably lead that initiative because it's a CRM program, and then under them they'll have a data scientist to run the analytics, they would have someone from e-com, they would have a designer, a copywriter, basically every, everyone they need to move fast and agile is in that team and they all work cross-functionally. So basically the way it works is you come up with the ideas, you prioritize the ideas, you plan your sprints because some of the tests are gonna take longer to do than the others, and then they go into a two weeks period where they're actually testing. And then they come out of those tests and they analyze the results and they start again. So every two weeks, they're testing aggressively, so you know, all your batch and blast emails are going out, but as well as that, they're testing against the different segments, testing the you know, different creative, you know, any, any number of different tests. So it's a lot of extra work for the team. And again, when they're doing their day job, if you don't do this, you will fail because they just don't have time. So you literally have to lock people in a room and say, guys, this is your number one priority. You have to focus on this and take the pressure of their day job away from them because it a, it's a hell of a lot of work. So this will probably look familiar to some of the uh, sessions we saw yesterday. So again, we, we don't do anything on gut feel. Everything's based on the data. Everything's based on testing and analytics. So whether it's an email test or a website test or you know, any, any test for that matter, the, basic, the way it basically works, you have your entire 
audience or database. Let's pretend this is an email campaign, okay? So you have your entire database. Then in the pink, you have the group of people that you think is relevant for this particular message. So let's pretend the email is gonna sell, you know, promote our, our new dress category to our, our database. There may be people on the database that we don't want to send that to, you know, for people who are in journeys, new customers, whatever. Then once we have the total group, we take a smaller group of that, and the two groups are statistically the same, and we have one as a control group, which gets the regular email, and one is the test group. And then we test these over the next two weeks, and again, throughout the test, we look at the results of the lift. At the end of the two weeks, if we've seen success, we say it's successful, check, and then we scale it out. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure those of you that use Optima go, well, that's what we're doing. Well, we're doing this today manually, without any technology, so you can imagine how hard this is. I had to hire seven data scientists to enable us to do this. So here's an example, and this is actually real data, by the way, so feel free to take this test and try it for yourselves. So this is the uh, website. Basically before, uh, this is the new arrival section. The web merchandise team, who had been doing their jobs you know, very well for the last few years, every time they put sale up the top, they would get more clicks and they thought it was a really good thing. And the new products at the bottom, uh, sorry, were at the bottom of the email. So we said, okay, that's interesting. Let's switch it around. So again, half of the customers would see what was there before, which would be the sale box at the top. And then the other half now saw the new arrival. So let's have a look at the results. So we run the test for 14 days. The test group had a 3.62% conversion rate. The customers that saw the uh, new arrivals had a 4.3% conversion rate. And with the statistical analysis, we said that that ran at a 95% probability. So that's a check, that was a successful test. Sounds familiar, right? Someone, I think, talked about this yesterday. Um, AOV, that's the second key metric, because your revenue is obviously your traffic times your conversion times your AOV. So AOV in this case also went up 2.3% at an 80% confidence level. So we say, you know what, we'll bank that money too, check, and we have a lift. And I, I obviously removed what the total revenue impact is, but uh, you, know, you do that over 100 million users and the money adds up pretty quick. I forgot to mention everything we do through this initiative gets you know, tested like this. And then once you've got a successful test, at the end of the two weeks, you sit in front of the CFO, you show the results and he believes you, check, and it goes into the incremental uh, target that we're all trying to hit to get to that 50 percent here's another example this is really straightforward guys there's money all over the table when you start testing so before the image on the website looked like that you know we wanted to show the girl she's really pretty great we said hold on what if we showed more of the product because if you look at the first picture it's mostly the girl right you don't really see the product so in the test we actually just shrunk the image so to bring up more of the product, and now you get the full product shot. Okay, makes sense. Let's look at the results. So in this case, no impact on the AOV. Actually, that's not true. It was 2% higher, but it wasn't statistically significant, so we couldn't bank it. So we say no impact, okay? But there was a significant lift on the conversion, 4.7% at a 92% confidence level. So that's another example of a successful test. Okay, so we roll that out. One click of a button, that rolls out. So that is now live every time you hit the website. So the technology, as Boris was saying, enables the marketing strategy. So the ideas are there, you need the technology to deliver it. And I think the last test is also a super simple one. So everyone knows uh, website speed is absolutely critical to conversion, to drop off rates, etc. So So you know, we're the first to admit our website's you know, old, we're replacing it next year. So we teamed up with a company called Yoda, I'm sure some of the retailers in the room use these guys will know who they are. Uh, and their, their, their thing is that they can help speed up your website. So again, we didn't want to sign a contract with these guys and just you know, jump headfirst into a relationship. We A-B tested the site and we saw the site speed improve by 0.7 seconds, 0.68 if I added that up correct, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in the world of e-com, that's a heck of a time. So then we have a look at the results and we see a 4% lift in our conversion rate due to the site speed. So this is three examples of A-B testing. I use the, uh, the website one because we have much more velocity on the website testing at the moment because we have the right tools to do it. And this is what we need 
Optimum for is to help us get more velocity in our CRM testing. So this is what it looks like today. So we have a loyalty program, very successful one. We have over 2 million members in the program. I think 70% of our entire revenue for the business through the loyalty program. So that's great, check. But when they set the loyalty program up two years ago, they didn't really put enough investment into the data. So for my team today to pull a, a basic CRM campaign, take the red dress example, let's send an email to people that shop red dresses. The time it takes for the team to do that, they have to manually extract the data, they have to probably reach out to the BI team, they might be busy, I have to go knock on someone's door to make them do it. Three or four days later, they might get the, the list, they send it out, great, okay, check, job one. But then you have to track the results. So then, you know, two weeks later, you look at the test in the control group, the team go back in to analyze it, and they realize that four days data is missing, because there's no BI data governance, there's no one looking at the data. Back and forth, they have to work with the BI team. You know, three, four weeks later, we get the results, which isn't very practical, right? And if you want to test at the velocity we need to test, it's not going to get you really far, which is why we signed up with Optimove. So, um, why did we sign up with Optimove? Firstly, as I just said, we didn't really have a CRM system. So rather than signing up with a, you know, archaic CRM system, there's lots of them out there. I've had them before, they're not much fun. We thought, let's go with the best. We get all of our data in one place, plus we get all the advanced models and analytics that come out of the box. Um, I can only speak for retail, but you know, their retail models are, you know, they've got one-time buyer models, churn risk models, uh, I'm sure they can help us uh, migrate our customers from one brand to the next. And I'm, you know, I'm assuming some of you guys are using this stuff today. So we got pretty excited about the models. But then for me, the really, the big one is the next two, is the ability to do this cross-channel marketing very quickly. So pull a list of customers, set a control group, deploy the campaign, whether it's on email, Facebook, direct mail, SMS, push, and then let Optimove do all the work. The data comes in every, every day, and then, you know, marketing simplicity, you log into the platform, two weeks later, you can track your results. In fact, you could probably check your results after three days. If it's not looking good, you could turn the campaign off. So we, we're really excited about this velocity that we'll be able to get with um, Optimove. And then, of course, the last piece is through more testing. You fail. I think over 50% of our tests fail today, actually, which is really good because when you fail, you learn. And a lot of the tests that we fail on are things that we would have done anyway. So someone from e-com says, let's do this. And in the old world, they would just say, yep, sure, let's do it. Now my team will say, no, you can't do that without testing it first. Half the time they're right, half the time they're wrong. But if you get it right 50% of the time, and you get it wrong 50% of the time, chances are you won't get anywhere, right? You're losing money here, you're getting money there. So by, by not scaling the failed tests and only scaling the positive tests, you're more likely to have a positive lift. Um, throughout your program. And then the last slide, and I've still got 11 minutes left, so that's good news, is just to show you guys the velocity of what we're doing in such a short space of time. Um, and the only way again to do this is with uh, executive level alignment, take everything I said at the beginning, taking people out of their day jobs, telling them that this is a priority, um, and then putting the right resources and budget behind it. So. You know, we knocked on our CTIO's office and said, this is what we need in the next 12 months, and this is what we're getting. So we've already rolled out Dynamic Yield, which is all the A-B content testing. Service Cloud launched two weeks ago, so now our call center can access our 360 data. We're gonna enable chat and other features within the call center, so we can deliver that right level of customer experience. Yoda went live, I forget now, uh, two months ago. That was the speed testing to improve the speed of the website. I think Optimove's up next. We're going to try and be live by February. So we kick off the project once we get back from this lovely uh, conference. Crowdtwist, I don't know if anyone's heard of them, but they're the number one loyalty platform in, uh, in Forrester. So yeah, we're relaunching our entire loyalty program. That's another initiative. That's a huge initiative. Some companies would take two to three years to do that. We're also signing up to the buy now, pay later. Uh, option where you can check out and not pay anything up front and then you set it up on installments. I heard someone talk about that this morning. Commerce Cloud I've already talked about and just to sort of throw it in for good measure, 
We're also ramping up our entire HR processes because you can't get very far when you're walk working with archaic HR processes and you know, people are getting caught up you know, manually doing expenses and things like that. So that's probably just a flavor. There's probably another 20 initiatives that we're working on, um, but all of that's gonna get done in the next 18 months. Um, and that's what a digital transformation looks like. That's it. There is time for questions. I don't know if anyone's brave enough to ask any questions, but we can talk about the rugby. I know there's someone from Ireland here. Congrats to anyone from England that knocked us out of the World Cup. Cool. Questions? Yes, sir. So I can't hear. So how do you account for the differences in the product? So you said you moved the one of the example was you moved the new arrivals lower down. Why if those new arrivals were better or worse than previous new arri arrivals? Well, in this case, it wasn't whether they were better or worse. It's just that the visibility of the new arrival product was so far down the website that people weren't scrolling down. So by increasing the, the new arrivals above the fold, we got more clicks on the new arrival section. Obviously, your new arrival is more likely to be your best product at a higher price point. So we found that um, by doing that, we got the right lift and the right clicks. So yeah, it did compensate our sale items, but if you're in retail, you, know, you want to be selling as much of your full price product as you can, as quickly as you can. Any other questions? Great. Oh, there's one here. Hey. Um, so you're obviously just targeting Generation Z. So in regards to that, how many like different segments do you believe exist within that? That's a good question. I can't really answer that right now because I don't have Optimo. Um, we, look, when I joined, they were really not doing any segmentation, to be completely honest with you. Seven, you know, the typical retail, one email a day, same email to everyone. Um, so that's kind of where we are. We're obviously testing against that. So we, first thing we did was our clearance segment. So we have identified customers that shop clearance. We did a decile analysis, which basically means you put your entire database into deciles, starting with the best customers at the top, best based on uh, you know, percent of their purchase with, uh, you know, on new arrivals. So, and we quickly found that the customers in the top decile not only bought reg, but they spend way more money. And then right at the bottom, and we love all of our customers, don't get me wrong, but right at the bottom of the, the decile analysis, the 10th decile, were these customers that only shop clearance. So we've started that, um, and then we've tested against that, and we're trying to figure out what's the right mix of sale messaging against each of the segments. Because you know, even your best customers, you know, if you can get an extra spend out of them by sell, adding a clearance product to their basket, it's not a bad thing. So that's one thing we're doing. And then the other thing that we, uh, we're doing right now, which you know, I don't know who lives in North America, but I'm from Montreal, Canada. And if you go there in the winter, it's like minus 20, minus 30. Don't ask me why I moved there. I'm from New Zealand. Um, it's freaking cold. And right now our customers, and when it's cold, the head offices in Montreal. So the, you know, the designers are cold, so they add the snowflakes to the emails and you know, the girls are wearing all the outerwear. And we send that same stuff to the girls in California which makes absolutely no sense, right? So that's kind of the next level of segmentation is, okay, we have 40 stores in California. We know they buy a different product. Why don't we take the time to design the email? So that's our next thing. But you know, we've talked about it. You start small, one segment at a time. You can't change the world in one day. So we're testing against that. But you know, ask me that question next year. Hopefully we're doing 30, 40 segments. I don't know. Yeah, cool. Any, one more question there? Yeah, so did everyone, so she's, she asked, do you feel it's aggressive targets? And the answer is absolutely. Good news is my, my, my Boris, he's on the hook to deliver it. So uh, no, like jokes aside, we brought in 40 developers, 25 developers, seven data scientists. Uh, you, know, you know, we have a check, like a, literally an open checkbook. If we're working on initiatives, we have a strong business case, we will move fast. So we have all the support all the way up. There's no politics. Everyone's behind this. It's absolutely the key initiative for the company. So when you have full alignment from the top down, uh, it, it is easier. Of course, it's still stressful, and you know you wake up and you, you know you're a week late here and a week late there. When you have so many pro programs running at the same time, the goal is to try. Like next June, we have to launch a loyalty program, the CDP, ecom, all at the same time. Because one of the things we don't want to do is 
implement some of these products on the old technology and then have to do it all again. So that's actually the tricky part is the timing of all these initiatives to go live at the same time. And if one of them slips, you potentially slip all the projects. So that's probably the hardest part of it is just getting the timing right and you're juggling all those balls at the same time. Cool, one more question. If I remember right, you said that you have 400 stores, right? Yeah, 400 stores, yeah. And uh, you said in three years you're gonna have 50% is gonna be online, the sales. So how many stores do you think are gonna close? Or we are talking about new customers? Yep, we're gonna open more stores to answer the question. Um, and let me, clear, we, we're growing aggressively. So let me clarify, I did say 50% digital, but I did not say 50% on e-com. So let's think, what does that mean? So iPads in the store. So we've just rolled out iPads to all of our associates in the store. We're launching online exclusives. So if a customer walks into the store, maybe she's plus size. You know, we don't have a lot of that stuff in the store. The associates will now be incentivized to go online. And uh, you know, through clientele, they'll be able to sell them a product online. So I expect a huge portion of that uh, digital to come through, uh, through the stores. Uh, you know, we're also looking at how the stores can help us with our return processes. Our return process today is not customer obsessed, so we want to make sure that there's an easy return process. And you know, we've only just rolled out ship from store. So when you buy on Ecom, uh, now the stores are also helping with fulfillment, which most retailers are doing, but we didn't stop there. We took it to the next level. So rather than having an Ecom order, so I mean, you know, hopefully most, you know, most retailers, when you buy online, believe it or not, a lot of the products get shipped from the stores, okay? Uh, our warehouse is in Mount Montreal, Canada. We have customers in California. That takes about 10 days to send the product over. Again, that's not very customer obsessed. So now we send the items directly from the nearest store in California. But with the data science team, we took it to the next level. Uh, and again, given we're big on technology and gamification, we basically created an app. We call it the Uber app. It's not branded Uber because we'd get in trouble for that, but it's basically the Uber app. And just like when you want to get a taxi and you look up Uber, you see the five drivers, right? And it sort of crowdsources and says, who wants to pick up this order? The AI, our data science team, have built a model that sends out this request to five plus stores that have the inventory on hand. There's about three or four rules. It's not just inventory. It's, you know, what's their turnover of the inventory? How far are they from the customer? And then it sends out a request to the stores and the stores get incentivized on how quickly they can pick up the order so we can get out to the customer quickly. So we're, we're just tearing everything up and like building everything from scratch. So digital is really omni-channel. 90% um, of customers will start their journey you know, on the website or maybe on a Facebook ad and come to the website. Um, so digital, yeah, let me clarify, it's the overall commerce or digital experience. But again, that includes our associates in the store. I think I'm out of time. Cool, thanks everyone.